Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, here we are, uh, another Monday afternoon uh, session for the uh, Admiral Markets uh, webinar series, Trading Spotlights. Uh, my name's Paul Wallace, and I'll explain myself a little bit more in a slide or two. Uh, but today we are here to talk about the three bar reversal Forex trading strategy. Um, a, a, a very simple trading strategy that I uh, utilize myself in my own trading, which I'm, I'm very happy to uh, here share with you uh, today. So I said, I hope you can all see the screen. Hope you can all hear my uh, voice, see the video, and uh, you can uh, also see our uh, our slides. Um, what am I going to cover today? Well, there's plenty going to cover. So uh, hopefully that uh, there'll be lots there to, to keep you uh, uh, entertained and educated throughout our session. So I'm going to talk about uh, what is the uh, the three bar reversal. Uh, I'll show you where and how do they uh, set up. As I said, they're a very uh, very simple setup. Very uh, uh, you know. Uh, very simple uh, um, uh, setup uh, and we'll just talk about well you know what you have to be aware when using them okay there's uh, not all three bar reversals are the same and so hopefully going to show you a little bit about how they can uh, how you can find the best ones and utilize them in uh, in forex markets how do we trade them okay i'll share that with you okay i'll show you just a very the simple standard setup uh, and then if there is time uh, then we will look to check them out on live markets okay so um, that's always uh, uh, based on on the time we have as always we're here for about 45 uh, minutes uh, as always myself and uh, the uh, the moderator here you know we uh, uh, we love uh, it's great for you to be here joining us okay we uh, we love having the engagement please feel free to um, ask questions either about this or about the uh, um, uh, the rest of what's coming in the Admiral Markets Trading Spotlight webinar series. As I said, if we stay to the end, we'll be able to uh, check them out on live markets. If you're watching this on uh, YouTube, okay, feel free to, to please contact or just hop in the comments box. And if there's good questions there, you'll find that the team here at Admiral Markets are, are very uh, willing and eager and, uh, to engage with you and, and help you wherever they can. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, as I said, my name is Paul Wallace. I'm a, a trader, a sort of analyst and a coach. Uh, I've traded for a good few years now, okay, uh, having uh, sort of been a battle manager in the Air Force. So uh, I started just trading many, many years ago on uh, sort of uh, shares and equities back in the, uh, the old days. But I've uh, sort of transitioned across to sort of trading uh, primarily FX indices and commodities. I've uh, been fortunate enough to trade for, you know, hedge funds of high net worth clients, uh, primarily, I am a swing trader, okay, and, and I'm looking for to sort of trade the trends in uh, uh, in the sort of the longer time frames, uh, and I'm more of a sort of a reversal mean reversion trader for for intraday trade setup. So that's uh, that's a little bit about uh, about my uh, about myself, uh, and uh, you know we're you you know as I said you're very welcome to sort of ask us questions as we go through the uh, the series. Uh, as always, uh, you know, Admiral Markets are a you know, truly, truly global brokerage, okay? They're a Forex and CFD broker with over 8,000 financial instruments. They've got offices there in over 20 uh, countries, so there's uh, a lot of expertise globally. Uh, they are licensed across the world, okay, That's, uh, which is very important in the, uh, the, the modern age. And, of course, what we also have is, you know, provide competitive spreads. Uh, typically, as you can see there, typically 0 0.6 pips for euro dollar and 0 0.8 pips for the DAX, so very competitive spreads on very popular trading instruments. Uh, and they also offer the uh, trading platforms MetaTrader 4 and MT5, uh, and also with the Admiral Market Supreme Edition, which is well worth checking out. And if you have any questions about that, please get in touch with your account representative, and they'll be, they'll be very happy to, uh, to engage with you. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, let's kick into what we're uh, all here to talk about. Everybody loves talking about trading systems, okay? You know, I uh, I run trading events all across Europe, and uh, you know, it's one of the things that all traders they uh, love to get together and they love to talk about different sort of trading methods, I like to try and understand how traders are sort of engaged with markets. It's something that is perennially interesting to, to traders, even though depending on how, how level long you've traded, there's always a professional curiosity about how other traders engage with markets. So as I said, this is just a, a very simple, almost mechanical, okay, mechanical to the edge of subjective in terms of uh, trading setup. So it's, uh, you know, literally a, a mechanical trade setup, which creates over uh, three bars or three candles. Um, it is, like with all of the elements that I share with you over our uh, webinar series, it is what I call time frame and instrument agnostic, meaning it will see it set up across the spectrum. 
Today, we're going to focus on it in the, uh, the Forex markets, but this setup will show up in intraday indices, on monthly charts of uh, commodities, it will show up in uh, crypto, it will show up in FX markets, it will show up in uh, fixed income markets. It's, uh, it's a very, very uh, simple, okay, very simple uh, setup, okay, uh, and you know, hopefully sharing with you today might just give you, a, a, you know, an easy way to start to, to sort of uh, to view and look for simple setups. And today, as I said, we're going to focus on the Forex markets. And actually, it's the location of where the three bar set up that creates the conditions for a trade or not. Okay, so the three bar itself is, is, is quite mechanical in itself, but it's actually it's the location of where that sets up, the where there is an element of subjectivity. And I'm going to show you how, uh, how that can be uh, employed to help you with your, with your own trade selection. So, you know, uh, here we go as we look for a setup. Swing trader, you know, you can trade this on the weekly, the daily, the four hourly. But as I said, it, it will actually even set up on the monthly charts, but, you know, you might only get one or two trades a year. Okay, so it's all about uh, how, how often or how frequent you want to be engaged with the uh, markets. If you're an intraday trader, yes, you will see these setups on 60, 50 and five mi minute charts. Uh, you will also see them on one minute charts, but of course things happen quite swiftly on the one minute chart. So uh, unless you're a very experienced trader, I would uh, suggest that if you're an intraday uh, uh, engager, then in barely 60 to 50 in the five minute chart, it's fine. You'll see that uh, we just use a very standard, simple setup, okay? The 20 to 50 in the 200 period moving average on the, the simple, but it doesn't necessarily matter massively whether it's a simple or the exponential you use. It's, uh, it's just effectively there. We are just using them as a, uh, an area to give us confirmation that there is a, a trend in place and also an area where we might see some dynamic support and dynamic resistance. If you're really very new to trading and don't fully understand moving averages or you know, how they are set up, if you go back and look in the uh, sort of Admiral Markets uh, YouTube channel or on the uh, Admiral Markets Facebook page, uh, you will find quite a few uh, webinars from the past where it, myself and some of my colleagues, they will also explain you know, moving averages, how they set up, how they're created, how you can use them in your trading. But for today, it's nice and simple. We just want to see them in alignment. So what we're really ideally looking for, just to confirm that there is a nice trend in place, is that price is above the 20, which is above the 50, which is above the 200 period moving average for a buy, or price is below the 20, below the, which is uh, beneath the 50, which is beneath the 200 for uh, a sell. That's, that's just where we're, uh, that's where we're looking for, okay? We just want to see price above the moving averages for a buy, price beneath the moving averages for a sell, okay? Just nice and simple. So step one, ladies and gentlemen, define if there is a trend. And that's really just using that price structure and moving average fan as we've just talked about. Ideally, we want to see price is above the 20 period moving average, which is also above the 50 to define an uptrend. That's really what we're looking for, okay? We're just looking for that and very simple. It's very quick and clear and easy to, uh, to identify. And it's then that once we've defined if there is a trend, we are looking for a pullback to enter long. And this is for the setup. I'm showing this as a, uh, a buy opportunity, as a long setup, okay? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for price to be above the 20, which is above the 50, which should be above the 200, to define if there is an uptrend. And then we're looking and waiting for, to see if there's a pullback to give us an opportunity to enter long on a pullback into markets. And, well, some people will trade breakouts. Some people prefer bounces. Um, I, I personally prefer a bounce. I prefer a pullback, okay, in a trend as my, uh, as my way to sort of enter a market. Some people like to trade breakouts to new highs within trends, and that's, that's fine. That can, be, that can be done very well, depending upon what type of trader you are. But for me, personally, what has worked best over the years is for me to look to sort of trade pullbacks, okay, in, uh, in trends. So, as we said, in an uptrend, price retraced towards support, okay? And that's what we're looking for. Price retraces towards support. And that support can be either dynamic, as in the moving average. It might be the 20 in particular, or the 50, or even the 200. 
or it has a, a static level of support and resistance. So that might be something like a, a big round number, okay, that we see. So, or that might be a, a horizontal level of support or resistance that has been drawn in, perhaps even a trend line. Although I, I personally prefer either the sort of the moving averages or a, a very clear, very sort of a strong static level of support or resistance. So what we're doing there is that step two, We've defined if there is a trend. Once we've defined that, we're waiting for price to retrace towards support in this case because we're looking for a long. Then what we're looking for, step three, is we're in its most simplest, in its most simplest form, at that level of support, we are looking for two seller bars, which would be two red bars followed by a buyer bar, which is a green bar if you're very, very new to trading. That is what we have as our three bar reversal. That is what we're gonna to look to trade in the direction of the overall trend. That is what we're looking for, okay? So one, is there a trend? Two, wait for a retrace to support, whether that be dynamic or static. Then three, see, do we get two red bars followed by a green bar? Two seller bars followed by a buyer bar, okay? Just keeping it nice and simple. As I said, very simplistic, two red bars followed by a green bar. But what I also like to see personally, okay, for myself, is that if that green buyer bar, and let's just use these uh, wonderful drawing tools we've got here, just bear with me a moment. If that green buyer bar, okay, is also a, uh, a candlestick pattern, which we are covering throughout this uh, webinar series, if it's something like a pin bar or a rejection candle, or it's an engulfing candle, or an inside bar, or something like a doji or spinning top, well, that gives us more confidence. In this particular example here, you can see the price has been, it's above, the blue is the 20 period moving average, the red is the 50, the green would have been down here. Price has been an uptrend, it's been above it. Price has retraced back, and what we've seen is, there's the first seller bar, there's the second seller bar, this third bar is a green buyer bar. Not only that, we can see that it is a, uh, it's a rejection candle, a bullish rejection candle. Some people would call them pin bars. Some people would call that low test. It doesn't really necessarily matter too much about the label. It's about you understanding what is actually happening. It's a rejection candle there. So we've got bar one, bar two, bar three, okay? Two seller bars followed by a buyer bar, okay? At the dynamic support, okay, of this 20 period moving average, after we've decided and recognized that we're in an uptrend and that gives us an opportunity as our buy opportunity to sort of rejoin what we believe will be the sort of existing trend re-exerting itself. Hopefully that makes it a little bit clearer for you. Let's just kill all of these drawings. So for the very standard entry, which is what we're just going to cover today and what I'm going to share you with, with you again, okay, for the sort of uh, the very simple standard it might be conservative entry, we enter for a buy, we enter one pip plus the spread above the high of the buyer bar, okay? One pip plus the spread, okay? So FX pairs for, you know, the euro dollar, that might be 0 0.8 for dollar yen, it might be two, okay? So just make sure you know what the, uh, the spread is on that particular uh, uh, FX pair that you're trading. So for a buy, we're looking to enter one pip plus the spread above the high of the bar, all right? That's, that is where our entry is. Our stop loss, and our stop loss is very key, okay, because we always want to make sure that we are managing risk. Our stop loss is two pips beneath the low of the three bars, okay? That's beneath the low of the three bars. So, as we said here, trade one, oh, sorry, seller bar one, seller bar two, green buyer bar here, three. So, in this particular case, you know, we would be saying our uh, entry would be one pip plus the spread, Let's just say it's about here where our entry is. And our stop would be, we know that this candle, candle three here is the lowest, okay? It's the lowest of the three bars. And our stop would be two pips beneath the low of there. So we know where we're getting in. Uh, we know where we're getting out if we're wrong, which is possible. No trade system is 100% accurate. Our target for today, our target for today simply is one and a half times our trade risk. Okay, so if we're risking 30 pips on the trade, our target would be 45 pips. 
So let's say the distance here between our entry and our stop. Let's just say our trade risk here. Let's just say for, you know, for the sake of example, there you go. I, as always, I apologize for my artwork. I'm a better trader than I am an artist, I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen. So please indulge me. Please forgive me. But let's say our trade risk is 20 pips. Okay. Let's say our trade risk here, the difference between our entry and our exit is 20 pips. Well, our target, okay, in this version is just simply one and a half times our trade risk. So if we're risking 20 pips, we'd be looking for 30 pips of uh, profit. So in this case, that let's just say that that might be up here. That might be our 30 pip target. There you go. Hopefully you can uh, read my uh, terrible, terrible writing there, okay? But you get the idea. That's the important thing, okay? There you go. So... Let's just clear this off. And I'm actually just going to go through this again because it's uh, because it is quite important, right? Our entry, one pip plus spread above the high of the buyer bar. Stop loss is two pips beneath the low of the three bars. Your target is one and a half times your trade risk, right? So you know where you're getting in. You know where you're getting out if you're wrong. And you know if you're going out where you, when you're right, okay? So the, the trade is almost, in that particular version, is almost like it's like a sandbox trade, okay? Once that trade is on, all right, once that trade is triggered, you could almost sort of walk away and leave it. And for some traders, that's the best thing for them to do. It's just, uh, you know, you have a stop loss in place, you have a target in place, you could let the trade play out. Okay, so <clears throat> so I appreciate that. You know, what we've just talked there is like a kind of a standard setup, which is almost like the sandbox setup. But I, I do appreciate that some people like to use a trailing stop. Okay, some people like to use a trailing stop. Some people like to sort of try and ride that trend and hope that that trend might just sort of go for whether it might be the rest of the morning, the rest of the session, the rest of the day, the rest of the week or the month, depending upon the time scales that you look to trade on. So if you are someone who prefers to uh, actually uh, utilize a, a trailing stop, well, what you can do is you can utilize a three bar trailing stop, okay? A three bar trailing stop. What does that mean? Is that every time a new bar closes, you trail or stop loss either underneath the low of the last three candles when you've taken a long trade, or above the high of the last three candles when you've taken a short trade. So invariably, let's just say, you know, we've had our uh, trade here. Okay, we've got some more examples to talk about. But when this next candle completes here, well, then what we can look at is that would be candle one, candle two, candle three. Our low would still be here. That's the low and our, our stop loss would still stay here. Same again, okay, when this trade completes here, we're still here. This is still the low of the last three bars. And it's actually, it's when we move here, this candle here, this candle, when that candle completes, when it completes and it actually, you know, it actually finishes, well, then we can be able to sort of, you know, look at the, uh, the last three candles, candle one, candle two, candle three, and our stop loss would now move up from two pips beneath the low here to two pips beneath this low here as well. And that is what you do. You would just trail your uh, stop loss until you are taken out. Okay. So some people, that's why they prefer to, to use a trailing stop. They're hoping to actually capture as much of a possible run as, as possible. Others like myself like to just hit a target. Okay. I like to know where I'm getting in. I like to know where I'm getting out if I'm wrong. I like to know where I'm getting out if I'm right. Okay. And that just suits me. And part of this is about understanding which type of trader you are. For some people, it's, you know, it's not necessarily about which is better, which is worse. It's about what is the best for you. What is the way that you can actually follow simplest, most easiest in your own trading setups? So here's a couple of other things, elements on the uh, sort of a trade management side of, of this setup. If the trade has not triggered after three candles, then take it off. What does that mean? Well, let's just say that, you know, we've had this setup here. We've had one, we've had two, we've had three. We've uh, set our order here, okay? We've set our order, one pip plus the spread above. We have our stop, two pips beneath. But actually what happens is that the candles keep moving down here, okay? The candles keep moving down, all right? If after three candles, the trade still hasn't triggered, then we take it off. Why are we doing that? Well, remember what we're looking for is we're looking for a little bit of a momentum play. Okay, we know there's a trend, we know there's a pullback, 
And what we're looking for is momentum to re-exert itself. And if it isn't re-exerting itself, then the question is, do we really want to be in the trade? Okay, do we really want to be in the trade? What we're looking for is that lots of people who've been on the sidelines, okay, sat waiting for an opportunity to get back into the, to join this trend. They're there waiting, hoping to bosh get back into that trade and rejoin it, okay? And if that hasn't happening, if the market is just trickling its way down still, if for three, uh, three candles after close, after where we are, uh, after our third trigger candle should have, well then basically we just, we're just gonna leave it, okay? Because we want, we, want we want a bit of momentum, we want the sort of, you know, the, the, the sort of the wind in our sails, okay? And if it's not looking like that, well then let's not, uh, let's not touch it, okay? Also, secondly, if the uh, price continues, let me just get rid of these. Uh, if the price continues, okay, we've got, let's say we've got our uh, entry order here. We've got our stop loss here, okay. If price continues, okay, so let's just say price continues and actually closes beneath the low of the three bars, all right, before, before it reverses and triggers, then once again, take it off, okay, take the trade off. All right, that's it. You know, we we've just we know where our entry is, we know our stop loss, but if it actually goes trades through where our stop loss would be, all right, before before our trade is actually triggered, well then invariably just we just take it off. Okay. We we just leave it. It's not it's not sort of it's not playing ball the way we like to, okay. It's about having just simple little simple rules here like this that allow us to sort of just try and take the uh, the best opportunity. And, you know, as I said, once the trade is triggered, okay, once that trade is triggered, then let the trade play out, okay? Let the trade play out. And this, for new traders, this can be one of the hardest parts of it, okay? Once the trade is triggered, let it play out. And this can be one of the hardest parts for it because traders sit there, they watch it, they want to snatch at any particular profit, or if the trade goes against them, they want to they get out of it, okay? You know what to do with this trade, okay? Once the trade is triggered, you either have a a target of one and a half times your trade risk and a stop loss in place, or you are trailing your stop on by three bars itself. Okay. So it's a three bar reversal and a three bar trailing stop. Okay. Once the trade is triggered, let the trade play out. Okay. The sort of outcome of one individual trade can be utterly random, but once you start to trade this over 20, 50, 80, 200, 500 trades, that is where we start to sort of see uh, patterns. That's where we start to see uh, pof, uh, positive expectancy coming into our trading, okay? So once the trade is triggered, let the trade play out. So uh, I think Vincenzo was just asking a couple of uh, questions there, okay? In other words, if there's no immediate change of direction, the, the pattern is unsafe. Um, I, I suppose unsafe is, maybe a, uh, unsafe is maybe perhaps a little bit of a strong word, Vincenzo, but the, 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 the sentiment is correct, okay? As I said, what we're looking for is we're looking for the sort of you know, price to retrace back to that uh, area of, in this case, support, and we're waiting for all those people who've been on the sidelines, okay, waiting and hoping to join this trend, that's what we're waiting for them to basically hit, you know, hit the bid buy and be looking to sort of take the, the market back in its, uh, in its original direction. That's what we're doing. And so if it doesn't do that, if there isn't people waiting to come back in, to jump back in, to join this trend, well, then, you know, that, that might be giving us an indication that, you know, that the sort of trend is sort of uh, is running out of energy. It's, okay? it's running out of steam right for the rest of the day. So those are just a couple of simple rules. That's just a couple of simple rules that hopefully just to help prevent you from taking uh, weaker opportunities. That's, that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to focus on taking good, strong opportunities where, you know, we see momentum rejoining and actually, you know, that's what gives us the, uh, the sort of, as I say, the wind in the sails to take us towards our uh, targets. So uh, Sandra has just uh, put a question, but I'm not entirely sure. I uh, uh, I'm not entirely sure I understand the uh, the, the the question there, Sandra. If you could uh, if you could sort of re um, if you could sort of explain that a little bit more, then I'll be happy to try and uh, answer that question. Okay, it doesn't um, doesn't uh, I don't fully uh, don't fully understand that uh, um, myself. But if you uh, if yeah if you redo the question, I'll happily sort of try and help as we go along.
So, as I said, you know, this is this is about not so much about the outcome of one trade. It's about actually starting to do samples of trades. So what I talk about is, you know, look to do about 20 of these trades and then evaluate what uh, how they worked out for you. OK, for the sort of standard trades, what we've sort of shared with you today, you know, you're looking for maybe a hit ratio of somewhere between about 48 to 62 percent, depending upon the sort of uh, the the. Uh, the particular instrument and the time frame, but you know that should give you positive expectancy. Okay, if you're using a you know one and a half times target, that will give you positive expectancy. If you're using a trailing bar stop, that might change a little bit because it depends upon whether we're in a period of a sort of a very strong trends, in which case you might get a great results, or if you're in a period of weaker trends, okay, or weaker momentum. So, for example. Uh, during August, okay, just or in, during August when the markets are very uh, quiet and the sort of uh, uh, the sort of movements are sort of somewhat less normally, somewhat less than uh, we'd expect. But ideally, what we're looking to do is to be able to have positive expectancy on our uh, on our um, uh, on our results from looking at them in samples of twenty trades and above. So if you're looking for a, a, a short trade, okay, the reversal is, is pretty much still the same, okay? Now what we're looking for is, let's just get the drawing tool up here, ladies and gentlemen, is that, you know, it's, it's exactly reversed for a selling opportunity. So for a long opportunity, we were looking for price to be above the moving averages. We were looking for it to pull back and then have two sellers followed by a buyer. Whereas actually for selling, we need price to be beneath the moving averages, and now we're looking for two buyer bars, okay, followed by a seller bar, okay, a red bar at a period of resistance, whether that resistance is, in this particular case, dynamic resistance off the 20 period moving average, or it could be static resistance off a big round number or a, a strong level of uh, a strong sort of level, technical level of resistance on the chart, okay? So, you know, what we're looking for is that it's just reversing it in, uh, in the, such a way. So, you know, it's, it's two buy bars followed by a seller bar. That's what, um, that's what we're looking to do. So, uh, you know, um, Vincenzo could say that point two could be called a, a swing point. You're absolutely right. And sometimes that, might, that may occur. That is just giving you, let's say, um, you know, more confidence in the trade. Okay. That's what we, you know, we like to see. You know, if, it's, if uh, those of you who joined us when we used to talk about it in the, uh, the Mastering the 4Ms webinars is about looking for a confluence of events. So if you're having a, a reversal at a, a period or a, either a level or a period of a dynamic resistance, that also is a bit of a swing point as well in terms of the way the price action is setting up. You're getting a confluence of events of three or four things all coming together at one time and place. That is what makes us, uh, that's what makes us happy traders, ladies and gentlemen. So um, here's a couple of examples here, okay, in terms of uh, just, you know, trades up because what I want to show, I've got a few examples, some really very, very sweet, very nice ones, others a bit scruffy because with the best will in the world, you know, we, we, want, um, we want beautiful, clear pictures, but uh, any of you who have traded for a while will realize that sometimes we don't actually always, uh, we don't always get that. This is a, uh, a chart of the pound against the yen. This is a 15 minute chart. I've got sort of examples across uh, all variations of times. We can see that that, um, you know, down here, price is, you know, it's beneath the 20 period, it's beneath the 50, which is beneath the 200. We then get basically two buyer bars, okay, and then followed by a third bar, which is a seller bar, having bounced off the, uh, the 20 period moving average. It's also, this is a bit of a rejection candle, okay, I would have liked the body to be a little bit lower, but it's a rejection candle. So, you know, our entry, our entry is effectively, you know, two pips beneath the low with our uh, stop one pip plus the spread above the high uh, and then actually price runs down and on this particular case this was a bit of a challenging one is that price actually made it down to the target but because of the spread it didn't actually it didn't trigger the uh, the the uh, our uh, our buy order to, to effectively take us out of the trade of profit we actually had to wait overnight and then what happened is it, it basically hit there over overnight session and then we hit our we hit our uh, our target there for you know one and a half times our uh, trade risk and that's as i said that's a simple trade you can just let it play out okay just once the trade is triggered let it play out regardless of whether you know if you've got a a a, a target or if you're using a trailing stop loss Um, this would say the case of the pan against the Swiss on the, the daily chart. Hopefully you can see here that how, you know, um, price 
is above the moving averages. Okay, you've got the 20, we've got the 50, we've got the 200 here. Okay, we can see you can see for yourself that price has actually been in a, a nice, quite a strong uptrend. Price pulls back and it comes back to not only this uh, 20 period moving average, but also uh, what we can see is that there was a sort of a, a level of resistance which had become support. We've got candle one. Candle two, followed by candle three. Okay, that was a trade that just effectively just you know it's set up. There. It's very simple. Once we've identified the, uh, the you know there is a good trend in place, we're actually just waiting to see when price comes back to the uh, to the level of uh, pulls back to a level of support. Does it then provide us with a three bar reversal, which allows us the opportunity to effectively to to take our trade and get on board. Um, this was a case. This was from last summer. Okay, this was 2018, last summer, and, and I just put it in because it, uh, it just shows that sometimes, you know, when markets, the way they operate, sometimes they just go into periods where they provide you with lots of opportunity. Um, this was the Australian dollar against the uh, the uh, US dollar. This is a, a daily chart. We can see that price has been, uh, you know, what we had was uh, the US dollar was very strong that last summer. Australian dollar was very weak. So, you know, we had a bit of a bias to the short side. Anyway, we had uh, price had been beneath the 20, beneath the 50, and the beneath the 200. Uh, and what we can see is actually, you know, price just kept uh, pulling back, okay? And it gave us three bar reversals, two buy bars followed by a seller bar, okay? Up again, two buy bars followed by a seller bar. Up again, two buy bars followed by a seller bar. Two buyer bars followed by a seller bar, two buyer bars followed by a seller bar, two buyer bars followed by a, a seller bar, okay? And it's just a case of sometimes that's, you know, I wish, I wish it was always like this, okay? I wish markets were always like this. Unfortunately, they're not. But, you know, it's just recognizing that, you know, sometimes, you know, when good, strong trends are in place, this gives us an opportunity to sort of trade the pullbacks on, uh, on good trends that are, uh, are, are forming. Uh, and this is uh, in Euro Yen on the weekly. And uh, I'm going to, hopefully we should have time. I'll just check that we should have time. A few minutes to, to go on because the uh, the Yen pairs and the weekly chart have been very good for me uh, this uh, this year. Okay, they've, uh, they've, I'll try and show you a few examples where they have worked very well. But, you know, once again, this is, you know, price is beneath the 20, it's beneath the 50, then puts in one buyer bar, two buyer bar, the third buyer bar, okay, oh, sorry, the, the seller bar, my apologies, okay, is also an inside bar. You might remember we've covered that as well during the trading spotlight series. So we've got a, a three bar reversal here, okay, which also, as Vincenzo pointed out, forms a, a bit of a swing point, which is also bouncing off the 20 period moving average in a downtrend with an inside bar, okay. So invariably what you're doing is you're getting that opportunity, okay? There's a confluence of events, all right? There's a confluence of events occurring. And actually that's what we're looking for in terms of a, a, you know, a really good setup that we can, uh, where, you know, we're happy to take. Uh, once again, this is the Aussie dollar on the, uh, the, the one hour chart now, okay? Just, uh, here we go. Just, you know, we can see that price is above the 20 period moving average. It's above the, the 50. We can see it's actually it's way above the 200 period. And what we can see is that, you know, we invariably keep getting these kind of, you know, one, two, three bar reversal setups, okay? So that should be a two, and that should be a three, okay? One, two, three, one, two, three, okay? We keep getting it, a few of them up until it actually hits a sort of a longer term, a longer term sort of a, a resistance level, and then it actually reverses and, and, and falls away, okay? And that's it. But on its way up there, there was a couple of nice opportunities there that provided you with uh, trade setups. And as I said, it's about, you know, once you've established that as a trend, it's about just having the patience to, to wait for those particular pullbacks. Uh, and this, you know, pound against the, uh, the US dollar, okay, in the daily chart. I'm trying to just show you different FX examples in different sort of time frames, so you can, you can sort of, you know, um, uh, get an idea, okay, if, you know, because I appreciate we get people here joining us across a whole spectrum of, of instruments and time frames, but, you know, one, two, three, okay, one, two, three, and three is also a bit of a spinning top inside bar. We can see it's sitting on the 20 period moving average. And, you know, we can see that price rallies its way up until it hits this 132 level, okay, and then puts in a very significant Q2 
key day reversal there, okay, which is uh, another pattern that we've talked about in the past. But, you know, as the trend is moving up, we can see that there's, there's opportunities there, okay? And it's just having the patience to wait for that setup once you've identified that there is a, uh, a good trend in place. Uh, and this is uh, euro yen on the four hour chart. Okay, euro yen on the uh, the four hour chart. Hopefully by now you can start to, to sort of see the uh, the examples. Okay, <clears throat> the, you know that uh, the, we're in a trend. There's a, a pullback which has a three bar reversal in place. Three bar reversal in place as part of the move up. Okay, and hopefully you can see you get a little bit of a, a shunt. Okay, a little bit of a push. That's what we're looking for. Okay, we're looking for that. We're looking for the you know the kind of the 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 dominant trend to reexert itself to give us a bit of a, a sort of a shove up the uh, up back onto the uh, existing trend. Excuse me. <clears throat> and that will allow us to that will allow us to sort of you know get on board and take our take our trades. And that's just a very scruffy one on the euro sterling, okay? Very stuffy, scruffy one, okay? Just to show that they're not always perfect looking, okay? That, uh, but what we can see is that uh, price fell back to the 20-period uh, moving average, two seller bars, followed by a, a, a green buyer bar, okay? Well, Three-bar reversal, and the trade just went up there, and it scraped in its one-and-a-half times target, okay, before it, uh, before it went sideways. So, you know, it's scruffy, but it still worked, okay? And that's, uh, you know, that's the, there, is, there is no perfection in trading, okay, unfortunately. So just to kind of finish off, and we've got a few minutes to look at some of the charts, is that, that three-bar reversal, it's a, it's a simple mechanical pullback trading tactic. One, define if there is a trend. Two, wait to see if there's a pullback to support or resistance. For a long, okay, we need two seller bars followed by a buyer bar. For a short, we need two buyer bars followed by a seller bar. And it's where the setup appears that is key. Okay, that's admittedly, <clears throat> that's the element of subjectivity. As I said, if you can see it, price pulling back into that 20 period moving average or maybe into a, a static level of support resistance or a, or a big round number, that in itself, or even some of them all together, that is a nice confluence event and that's what we like to see. So as I said, all right, it's a simple mechanical pullback trading tactic. It's important to define is where that three bar reversal occurs. We need to incur its part of a pullback in a trend at a suitable level of support resistance which provides us with a confluence of events. It can be used across all instruments and timeframes. And we've got a few minutes, so I'll show you a couple on, uh, on live markets if, uh, if you're of interest. I'm, I'm sure you are. I hope you are. But uh, what we can remember is that, you know, there's a, a whole host of webinars during this Trading Spotlight uh, series. And, uh, you know, what we've got on uh, this Wednesday coming up, I think that's the, uh, is that we've got Jens Klatt, okay, who's going to be talking about his way of trading the uh, S&P 500 US index, okay? So it'll be a, a fascinating session. So uh, Jens will talk about how to gain an edge at the uh, opening of the US market. His own particular open range breakout strategy for trading the S&P 500, showing you about how he back tests it and the live market examples of this strategy in action. So that is uh, this Wednesday, 1 p.m. GMT, Wednesday, August 28th. <clears throat> Just want to make you aware as well, excuse me, a little cough from my talking, is that from uh, next week, from the start of September, the uh, Trading Spotlight series will be, it'll just be Rolex by uh, an hour later, okay, from next week. So uh, what will normally be, we'll be moving to sort of what will be 2 p.m. UK, 3 p.m. Central European, 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern European time, okay? So just uh, make sure you put that into your diary and, and join us for these sessions going through into September. As always, you can check your inbox for the uh, the webinar link and you can always watch all of these sessions on uh, YouTube, okay? And if you do, please, you know, please like them if you find it useful. Please feel free to comment it. We enjoy it. Our team here at Admiral Markets, very happy to talk to you about that. As always, there's plenty on the AdmiralMarkets.com website for more analysis and education. And you can contact us at hello at AdmiralMarkets.com, YouTube.com forward slash Admiral Markets, or on the Facebook.com forward slash Admiral Markets global page. So I hope you have found that useful. We've got a few minutes left, so I'll 
just do a quick switch across. If you'll just uh, bear with me for a moment, I'll just switch across to the uh, MT4 demo and I'll, and I'll show you a few examples from where I have uh, traded this on the yen pairs myself this, uh, this year. So if just bear with me one moment, we'll switch across. So hopefully you can still hear my voice, hopefully you can see me, hopefully you can see the uh, Admon Markets uh, uh, MT4 Supreme Edition uh, charts here. Uh, thanks to some, uh, Plarman says thanks, I already made some profit with the uh, Bollinger Band strategy on the daily chart. Um, you're very welcome. It's great. Um, that's great to hear. We want to we want to help you guys as much as uh, as much as possible. But uh, we've just got a couple of minutes here, so I'm just going to show you a couple of uh, you know a couple of live uh, examples of. As I said, <clears throat> the Japanese yen has worked very well on the weekly charts uh, for myself this year. As I said, it will work across others, but uh, the Japanese yen has uh, has worked pretty well. And if I just look at, let's have a look at. Uh, this is my uh, Japanese yen uh, profile on uh, the MT4 platform. So you can see I've got all the uh, uh, Japanese, major Japanese yen pairs and the, the Nikkei here across the side. As I said, this setup will work across indices and commodities as well, but today we're just focusing on FX pairs for you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so what we can see is the, the uh, uh, this is the Aussie against the Japanese yen. We'll just focus on this year because the time but you know, this is the weekly chart, okay? You can see that we had a bit of a flash crash there. But actually what we, uh, what we had was, uh, you know, later on back in sort of uh, March, April time, you know, we're in a downtrend. You can see the moving averages are all down. Price has been beneath the moving averages, okay? It's been sort of grinding its way south as we've seen Japanese yen strength increase. And we had, you know, two buyer bars followed by a nice seller bar, which was also providing the start of a swing point. Uh, and then price fell and dropped away very, very nicely, okay? And, and uh, what we'll see is, I'm just gonna go through them quickly because of the time, is that uh, you know, that has provided us with quite a few opportunities this year uh, of the similar. This is the Swiss franc against the, the Japanese yen. Uh, and once again, you know, as I said, price has been, we've had yen strength, okay, which is understanding, let's say, the bigger fundamental picture, a lot of that to do with the sort of tensions rising between the uh, US and Chinese and people being sort of flowing into safe havens of Japanese yen. But once again, price was you know, beneath the moving averages, grinding its way down in a, in a downtrend. We had two buyer bars, okay, followed by a seller bar, which was also a, uh, a key reversal candle. It was also an engulfing candle, okay, that provided us, you know, with uh, opportunities to get sort of tighter entries. Uh, and that, that trade is actually still sort of just moving its way down towards its, uh, its target. So that was the, the, the Swiss yen. And uh, where else have we got here? The, the CAD, the Canadian dollar against the Japanese yen. <clears throat> it's the same picture pretty much as the others. It's, you know, Japanese yen has been strengthening. <coughs> Excuse me, I do apologize. Japanese yen has been strengthening. But as we can see that price has been beneath the moving averages. They've been just moving down quite nicely. And once again, we get three bar reversals, okay? We get two greens, okay? Two buy bars followed by a seller bar. And price has continued to move down nicely so i hope that uh, i hope that uh, sort of uh, gives you some uh, uh, ideas and some insights there's a there's a few more there but i appreciate we're a little bit uh, short of time and uh, what i'm always wary is that uh, is that actually you know once i start talking at this we could be talking all afternoon but uh, hopefully ladies and gentlemen hopefully you found that very very useful today take it away have a look at it okay as i said please feel free to contact us or drop comments on the youtube uh, uh youtube uh, page okay you know this is a very simple very simple setup that you can take away and utilize in your own trading i hope it gives you some uh, value and get some benefit from it and as always you know i look forward to uh, to you joining me on the next of the trading spotlight webinar series uh, and also please feel free to join jens on uh, wednesday for his session as well best of luck with your own trading ladies and gentlemen and i'll look forward to speaking to you soon